protecting our consumers from this online uh, fraud and theft has now become the number one issue facing the security of our great financial system. One of the things that several of us have been working on in this committee is to bring together public and private partnerships to address this because this uh, technology is overwhelming. And you can see how it, so many of our consumers have become victims. Um, I'm delighted to know about the public-private partnership that is going on now between FS and the Wharton School of Finance at the University of Pennsylvania over in Philadelphia. Now, uh, Mr. Rogers, you have expressed your support for public-private sector collaborations to help us protect our customers from things like this electric payment scams. So would you mind telling us how do you see our public bank uh, regulators and our private sector financial institutions working together to ensure that we have federal law that will provide electronic transfer protection for our defrauded consumers in our great nation. Uh, thank you, Chair Scott. Thank you for leading on this very important issue uh, of the fraud that's being experienced by all of our, all of our consumers. Uh, and it's being perpetuated by organized criminal activity. Uh, and that got exacerbated and accentuated during the pandemic. So I think we've got, uh, we have some existing role models in cybersecurity already, where we coordinate as banking uh, institutions and we work with our uh, various agencies. So when something happens on a cyber case, we communicate that immediately. And I think we have that same opportunity with fraud. Very good. Tell me exactly how would you propose that we reimburse victims who have been scammed into initiating an electronic payment transfer. How would we reimburse? Well, Chair, we do reimburse today. So we do reimburse for those who've been scammed, and particularly those who've been scammed with uh, our bank's name used in particular. We're very consistent in that. Uh, but I think in addition to reimbursement, we need to be focused on eliminating the fraud uh, and fighting the criminal activity. And Mr. Diamond, may I come to you, please? Um, one of my uh, biggest priorities has been reducing the number of unbanked families in our nation. What is your institution doing to get more of the unbanked population into the traditional regulated banking system? So we have 25% uh, of our branches in LMI neighborhoods. We have a new thing called a community branch, which is much larger. We invite in the population. We have things called community managers who walk down the street. We've got financial education seminars about mortgages, saving money, opening checking accounts. We invite the community in, tell them to come as you are, learn about these services. Uh, these seem to be working quite well. We're part of the OCC Bank On program, the REACH program, uh, and I do think these programs are starting to actually have an effect. And also, let me ask you this. What is your institution, J.P. Morgan Chase, what is your bank doing to overcome the mistrust that many people, one of our biggest known problems with decreasing the number of unbanked families in our nation is mistrust of traditional banks like each of yours. What is your do institution doing to overcome this mistrust of large banks? And if there are any of you others who are addressing this issue, please pipe in. I, I would love you to come visit some of those community branches in Harlem, South Side of Chicago, Crenshaw, New Orleans, Ward 5, Ward 6 over here, uh, and you'll see what we're doing. Local vendors, local folks, they're all coming in. We, we do tens of thousands of seminars. 
We try to make people very comfortable. We have products specifically designed, very low fees, no overdraft, and things like that. And I totally agree with you. That is part of the job. Thank you. And I just encourage, and I really appreciate, Madam Chair and Lady, this hearing. 